Hey everyone, Rick here, and I just had possibly the mo one of the most nostalgic visits to my friendly local game store that I have ever had. Now, Ground Zero here in Bellevue, Nebraska, there's two locations, one in Bellevue, one in Omaha, but the Bellevue, my hometown location, has been my friendly local game store for a long, long time. Probably since around 2000, 2001 or so. Back when I was just a wee lad of, what, 11 or 12 years old. So, I go there quite often to see what new releases they have, but also sometimes I can find a buried treasure. I found a couple of both uh, things, both categories of things. So the first, I just want to show you some of the things that I picked up today from Ground Zero Bellevue. The first thing, right here, fresh on the shelf, Fantasy Hordes and Heroes from AEG, Cards and Dice, fantasy theme board game. Uh, I wasn't sure, you know, I when I show up there, I'm not sure what they're going to have, and I really don't go there with any kind of game plan other than to browse and see what they've got. So, apart from that, anytime they have a fantasy board game like that, I snatch it up as fast as I can. Next, I couldn't believe this when I saw this. This is the Frostgrave hardcover miniature rule set and I can't tell if that's an actual signature or if it's printed on there but it could possibly be signed by uh, the author Joseph McCullough that'd be really cool if it was but this is a beautiful book hardcover book full of miniature skirmish rules that if you are into miniature wargaming whatsoever, especially on the fantasy skirmish level, you've probably heard of Frostgrave and have heard pretty good things about it. Normally I had heard you could maybe find this at Barnes & Noble, but I did. I found a copy of this at uh, Ground Zero Bellevue. So thrilled to find that. Now, those were the really the only two new things apart from these beautiful like glitter orange dice with silver pips. So every once in a while I'll pick up a new container of dice and these are just absolutely gorgeous silver and or uh, silver pips and glitter orange dice. So that is excellent. So those were new as well. However, that pretty much does it for the new stuff, so let's get into some retro stuff. So, as I am walking around the shop, looking and browsing uh, Dave behind the counter. He's been there since before I uh, showed up in 2000, 2001. Opens up this drawer, this cabinet underneath a whole bunch of role-playing game books and pulls a, a pile of stuff out of there. I said, Dave, is any of this for sale? He said, yes. This is a sci-fi passage set from Dwarven Forge. Yes, Master Maze. Back in the early 2000s when Dwarven Forge was still in friendly local game shops, I picked up a couple of my first dungeon sets from Ground Zero Bellevue back in the day, and he pulled this passage set out from, un I mean, what is this, old stock, and it's brand new, still in the plastic. This is just awesome. Now, I'm definitely more into fantasy, but... I do have some sci-fi games and some rule sets for just sci-fi miniatures. And I think that they would look just awesome in this sci-fi scenery from Dwarven Forge of all people. But how cool is that to show up at your friendly local game store in 2016 and they pull something like this out from 
under the cabinet, something that's just been sitting there for a decade and a half. That's nuts, but that's exactly what I love to find. So apart from that, here's something even older. I can't even believe this. This is Dungeon Works from 1991. Unbelievable. So you're talking almost 30 years, at least 25 years. This stuff is great, and I have a couple sets of this already. So what this Dungeon Works is, is this sheet of metal mat. It has this felt backing so it won't scratch your table. But it is a grid, a one-inch grid, so you can play role-playing games or other fantasy miniature games right on here. But the reason it's metal is because these uh, door pieces, doorway pieces and walls all have magnets on the bottom of them so they will stay in place wherever you put them. So obviously, after uh, this long, a lot of the, or at least some of the magnets have fallen off. Nothing a little glue can't fix, but with the ones that do still have their magnets on, you just put them, you know, and create your passages and rooms. And they have this, I don't know if you'd call it beveled, but they have this angled edge to them so that they, they will line up really nice for corners. But that's exactly what you do. They're two inches long, so you can just create rooms or hallways, whatever you want. And again, it's magnetic so that they will stay right on there. How cool is that? Now, I am, I really don't know if uh, Ground Zero actually sold this at some point. Uh, or if this was just from Dave's personal collection. Sometimes he sells me things from his personal collection, which I can't thank him enough for because it just sends my collector's mind into a frenzy thinking that I can pick up some old school gaming goodness. And so I was just thrilled to see this also in that pile of stuff that he brought out from under the cabinet. So that was truly exciting. The set of this that I do have, I picked up on eBay. And this as well. Dungeons and Dragons Adventure Game. So this is a box set. Uh, I believe uh, you will need dice of your own. I don't know if this originally came with dice, but it seems to be complete. Otherwise, has the Read This First Guide, has a booklet full of characters you can use, and scenarios, NPCs, unused blank sheets, grid, map, pack, so that you can fold that out. Here's the rule book and the adventure book. So when he pulled all this stuff out from under the cabinet, I created two piles, stuff I was interested in, stuff that I wasn't. And I said, Dave, is any of this for sale? Because you never know. He could have just pulled that stuff out of there for me just to take a look at, knowing that I appreciate it. But he said, absolutely, it's for sale. So this is a standalone box set of, uh, I think it's from the late 90s, uh, to kind of learn Dungeons and Dragons, but that's cool. So that was everything that he pulled out from under that shelf. However, he got in, sometimes these game stores will buy stuff or store credit or whatever and so he pulled out a bunch of old role-playing books that someone had brought in and sold him. Now, I don't role-play all that much but these books just look fantastic. Uh, I do collect some of the older Dungeons and Dragons books. This 
Deities and Demigods has just a lot of really neat uh, material from all sorts of different cultures that has then been adapted to become gods and beasts that you can use in your Dungeons and Dragons uh, role-playing game. Uh, whoever owned this originally actually colored in a lot of this, but some of the coloring is actually not that bad. So when I first opened it up, I was like, is this legitimately how it came, or did someone color it themselves? So, but then this, this huge AD&D monster manual has actual full color images of everything, and there's a decent amount of text here. Sometimes in these bestiaries and, you know, monster manuals, there's maybe a paragraph or a blurb to go with each one, but this has full color images and a decent amount of background. So, very cool AD&D monster manual to go along with that. Then, Dave, from his uh, private collection, did give me these figures. Now he knows I love Mage Knight, and he has shown me that he had had some of these before, but I told him at the time, make sure you hold on to those, because those are pretty special. But he said he had duplicates, so he brought me these duplicates, and uh, let me take a look at them and take them home. So what these are, are uh, two of these are Mage Knight holiday figures. This is from 2004 and this is from 2003. So you're talking about 12 and 13 years ago. These are both for Mage Knight 2.0, these holiday figures. And basically what they are, you could almost use them as Christmas ornaments, I suppose. But they're just kind of funny uh, little holiday figures. And they actually do come with rules and actually do have stats on the dial. If you're familiar with Mage Knight, you know that those figures all have stats printed right on the dial, and as they take damage, you just turn the dial, and the stats will change. And so these figures, obviously, are not meant to be used in, like, an actual competitive game. But you could, with those rules, just use them for fun in kind of a one-off scenario. So there was this one from 2003, which was the Santa Claus mech. And this is Frosty the Snow Minion. Now that's still sealed, so I'm going to leave it that way. Then this was from an old, another old WizKids game, Crimson Skies. It was all about dog fights with airplanes. And so they did a holiday version of that with a Santa Claus plane. So that was really cool. I'm glad that he knows enough about me to know I would appreciate this kind of stuff and bring it in. I mean, how cool is that? So that was pretty much it, except for something so cool. This is amazing. I asked him, and I ask him all the time because it's just nuts. You know, I love old gaming things, and so, and I've asked him before, Dave, you have any old Mage Knight stock left over anywhere, or are you willing to sell anything of your own? And then I asked him today, I said, do you have any old miniatures terrain? Because I remember, you know, 14 years ago, playing Mage Knight in the store, and they had store terrain. I said, Dave, you have any store terrain you'd be willing to sell? So he took me to the back, showed me all this stuff that he says never gets used anymore, he said to let me know if he's willing to part with any of it, but what he was willing to part with was this huge box full of Mech Warrior Battletech Hex Terrain. This stuff is ancient before I ever got into gaming, but it is official. He said at some point the company or something had their own line of terrain so it's all stamped every piece in here is stamped on the back and I can barely make out what it actually says it's like from the 1980s can you even believe that so this was the holy grail of me just asking is there anything back there all these hexes printed on the terrain and there's all different shapes slopes little bits and 
different sizes so you can create your own table. So you would just take a few of these and lay them out. And create your map. And you can tell some of these are a little rough around the edges, literally. But I mean, how cool is that? this 1980 at least that's what I think I see on the back of there and I mean come on uh, so I do have some Battletech stuff you know they came out with that nice Battletech introductory box set so they have the hex maps that come in the box set but wouldn't it be just freaking awesome to be able to play on this 3D terrain, come on. So this is fully modular. You can do whatever you want with it. And just piece together something, and I am, you know, not doing it at all correctly, but you have your slope so you can get up onto the higher areas. You can make even even taller areas and so you go from the ground floor up the slope to the next level up to this I mean you could create this whole map with this stuff and I mean this is just a collector's dream but I can't wait to uh, take a look and see what um, it's gonna be like to actually play some Battletech on these sheets on these you know foam terrain pieces. How cool is that? That's just amazing. I couldn't believe it. He sold it to me for a very fair price and you know I am just eternally grateful for everything that he um, he's so kind to let me take some of this old stuff off his hands. That's the great thing about those old Friendly local game shops, you know, it's mainly a comic shop. It's been around for decades before I was born. And just the fact that you know that there is some old stuff hidden away. And so I ask him every once in a while when it, you know, I think of something, I'm like, Dave, you got any of this in the back anywhere? And when he pulled this out I was just going nuts that's just so cool so anyway from old stock to new stuff they have it all you've seen some of my other unboxing if you have seen any of my other unboxing videos you know this place dabbles in retro video games now card games role-playing games miniature games board games pretty much everything and I love it. So, and I just showed up there today on a whim. I was like, hey, I'm in the area, and I just came out like a bandit. So, that is everything I picked up at Ground Zero, my friendly local game store. We are so fortunate in this area to have several, but I just love them so much. Well, as always, everyone, thank you so much for watching. Until next time.